Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the Olympus number 200 DW 2060 158 drawer lock, cabinet lock, whatever it might be, or wherever you're using it. This is going to be a um, a lock that will lock either it'll lock vertically either up or down. First, some visual uh, review of the item itself. The projection of the face of the cylinder, that's where that 158 comes in, it's inch and 5 eighths. Width of the body on the back, about 1 and 5 eighths as well. Height of the body, looks like the height of the body is about an inch and a quarter. Thickness of the body, about almost 9 sixteenths. The projection of the bolt, just shy on three quarter. Width of the bolt, about seven eighths. Thickness of the bolt, probably about three sixteenths. Yeah, I'd say that would be accurate. Now, where would you use such a lock? Let's talk about that right now. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. I think the defining characteristic of this lock is simply when you have not only something thick, thicker than average, you know, if this was a standard uh, thickness length body, it would probably, uh, uh, cylinder housing, um, I would say that they'd be closer to about, you know, inch and a sixteenth. Well, this is a good half inch longer than normal. So if you're applying something that is maybe inch and three eighths or maybe inch and a half thick, this might be a good solution for you. Then, of course, anywhere we're locking it vertically, up or down, is the required installation. That key can be removed in either position, and it can be installed in either position. Locking at the top, locking at the bottom, however you might like that. Okay? A couple of factory original keys from Compex. They're stamped 233. Um, that is not in our part number. Let's take a look at that. That is just the key number. There was no key number specified. Compax is going, Compax, forgive me, Olympus. Olympus is going to have standard biddings. Uh, this is obviously that 233 bidding is the bottom line. This is also going to include the strike that you'll use to secure it, however that's going to be installed. Okay, probably like that. That strike, just a piece of zinc coated steel about an inch and three quarter length projection, about a half of an inch, same in the other direction. And then six screws. You're going to have four for the lock body itself, then you'll have two for the strike. Okay. Let's switch to the screen view now and let's take a closer look at all of the supporting information. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Here is the item that we are looking at. Let's take a look at some photographs that we have linked to down below. The packaging, the contents. Close up of the face, there's your Olympus logo. There's the broaching of the keyway. You can see that bottom pin there, and you can see the top pin coming down. Uh, that is what's called negative locking. That's a locksmith term for when the top pin is coming down. Um, into the plug area, it's clearly negative locking. That pin's going to need to be raised. That must be a very shallow cut at the at the bow. Indeed, it is. It's, it's an extremely shallow cut at the bow. Uh, you can see here, very sh very shallow cut at the bow, because we're seeing the first pin. That's going to drive that pin, that shear line, all the way up here. Okay. 
Um, that is that is what's called negative locking. There's a term called positive locking when that pin sticks up into the shell. And if we were to dive deeper into positive and negative locking, you were looking for instances in a cylinder when you have both. It's a more secure cylinder when you have both positive and negative locking. Not to dive into locksmithing in this video, so let's just move on. Uh, that's what the entire lock looks like from a different perspective. Side view, or well, uh, yeah, this would be a, you know, a right side view. It really wouldn't be. Let's let's take a look at what a right side view would look like. Possibly, uh, it's not going to be a right side view. That could be a right side view. Anyway, uh, we are also looking at the back side of the unit, and that bolt obviously shimmies from here over to this side, depending on how you install it. Showing the bolt projected, that appears to be that base material. It is not magnetic. I'm going to go with bronze on that base material. Typical material used for a latch or a bolt. Keys, and then the accessory package, your strike and your screws to fasten everything. All right, there is, there are, there is, there, there, um, there is some extended description information to get into. Deadbolt drawer lock can be keyed together with other N-series locks. Easily rekeyable via set screw cylinder release mechanism. Yeah, you can, you know, you can rekey much of the Olympus line. If you had their keying kit and you had their blanks, yes, you can service these and rekey them. Uh, they can also simply be ordered keyed the way in which you want. When they mean the set screw, there is, I don't know if I have a picture of it, if there's any place that we can see it. No, apparently not. Uh, I just didn't capture the image. Literally at the opposite end of the barrel, at about three-quarter inch from the bottom, there's a set screw that if you were to loosen that, you'll get that cylinder plug brought out. Um, and then be able to disassemble the cylinder itself and, and recombinate it. Key to like, however you think might be what you're doing. Uh, okay. The key can be removed in the locked and unlocked position. Standard function locks are non-handed. Um, that's called non-key retaining, meaning you can remove the key when it's unlocked. Uh, so that is a definition of key retaining, which this is not. I've pulled that description out of, pulled that part of that out of the description. Cylinder length inch to 5 eighths. Yeah, barrel diameter 7 eighths. I didn't measure that. Let's take a look at that now. My caliper says 0 0.867. 0 0.867. So that's certainly close enough to 7 eighths. Two keys, the 12 3 bar strike and lock mounting screws. That's an N series equivalent to the National D4291. This is definitely a. This is a four pin cylinder that we have here. Two keys, key differently, four pin standard. When you buy one, we'll ship you one. Lots of information down here, some factory videos, very nice. Let's look at the catalog page and we'll breeze through all of these supporting documents. Uh, we have a 200 DW inch and 5 eighths. So we are clearly doing a KD, whatever that bidding is going to be for that. The 200 DW description is here. Dimensional properties are here. Cylinder length is referred to here, which you'll then pull from the chart. We're doing a 200 DW, 1 and 5 eighths. Uh, not doing weather resistant or non-magnetic. Let's go up over here, specifications. I'll leave that to you to read, but it gives you the overview of the system. Different keys. Uh, in terms of key, uh, key to like, different biddings. These are what would be called an indirect code, um, where there's a reference manual that tells someone if this is a 233 cut, that, that, that is directly related to cuts on the key, but that would be an indirect code because you need a reference document. Keying can be done at the factory. You've got that 12-3, that's the part number of the angle strike optional accessories, 
are here as well. You might need a spacer that will allow you to pull the lock body back a little bit, maybe to account for where you want the bolt to lock into the header or the, uh, the framing condition, top or bottom, or maybe you've got an unusual thickness and you need to suck that back a little bit um, because even 15 16 cylinder length is still too great. There are different thicknesses of those shims. 332nd, so about 96 thousandths, and then a quarter inch, about point, uh, 0.25, and then 0.5 inch. Different strikes are available. One of the cut sheets ought to show those as well. Trim plates if you want to dress off the cylinder body. And then you can do a long bolt. I don't know what the extra length of that throw is. Uh, it's clearly right here, one and five eighths. Typical Olympus gives you all of the options and more. Gives you more than you thought you needed. Data sheet. This is a cut sheet. This is a single page document. Well, it's not. It's a couple of pages. What's nice about it is it shows these accessories, the spacers, the trim ring. Uh, through bolt plates are usually available for these as well. The drawings once again. Installation instructions. This is pretty simple. You're going to drill a hole and you're going to attach it. Not a lot to deal with. You can see how your strike and how you're going to install it can change depending on what your architectural cross-section looks like. Spacers might come into play right here. You get a concept of where you would use that. Obviously needing longer screws might come into play as well with spacers. And there's our strike, the 12-3 strike. Architectural specifications, that's just if you need to convey to someone, here's what I want. You would convey this information to that person. Rekeying instructions, uh, you're probably not going to have to deal with this at all, but it would be very, uh, from a locksmithing perspective, it would be simple and straightforward. Here it is, I won't touch on that here. Key retaining chart, this is non-key retaining, but they do make them so that they can be. What's interesting about these is, um, what's interesting about cabinet doors, or safes for that matter, they always assume, it's assumed the doors swing out naturally, and they do. Uh, the hand of the cylinder is based on the side that the hinges are on. So this is a left hand because the hinges are on the left, um, is how that is. It's not exactly, it's not the way that it's done in the door business. Key, key retaining instructions, just more information. There are times when you can switch the function of these locks to be key retaining or non-key retaining. And let's see here now. This can be converted. I'm quite convinced of it. You would change the timing of this lobe and it will allow you to unlock the bolt. But at that point, you can't pull the key out with relocking it. So this can be set to non-key retaining should you need to. And that is all of the installation instructions or the supporting documentation. There's a link here to the manufacturer's page and from here we can pull up not only all of the Olympus parts that we sell by means of this horizontal navigation but also a link to the manufacturer's website as well as a link to the full product catalog. I would definitely recommend a review of the catalog if you deal with cabinet locks. These are institutional grade cabinet locks and the word institutional simply means heavy duty, grade one. You're not going to use them in necessarily in healthcare environments where you have an Alzheimer's ward or mental health ward, but in high volume retail applications like your favorite coffee shop. Yeah, those doors and those keys and those cylinders, they're going to get lots of use. You need something institutional grade, whether it be the lock or the hinges or anything else. Okay. Just a quick dive. It's a pin, four pin standard. So what that means is this is a pin tumbler lock. These are tumblers. They're pins, so they're tumblers. These are tumblers as well, but they're called disc tumblers. It's understood the security on a pin tumbler is a higher value than otherwise. An overview of lots of different locks. Um, to quickly give you an overview. If it comes to this sort of platform of lock, that you're using it in casework or woodwork, cabinets, you could have a chiropractor's office where you have 15 doors. It's a large office, 15 doors. Well, you've got 
a lot of architectural woodwork and it's going to take some sort of a drawer or cabinet lock. Olympus is able to provide you not only the N style key blank, the tiny little cam lock key blank, but they can also do these locks in full size keys, meaning whether it be Sargent or Medico or Schlage or small format interchangeable core or Corbin Russwin, they can give you these cylinders to match the rest of the keying system. And it would be considered absolutely standard practice that you would have um, that sort of scenario. You would have cylinders that are going to be used um, in those applications that have to be compatible with the keying system in the building at large. And as I'm scrolling through here, I know that we're about to get to some of that. Sergeant. This is a conventional core sergeant. Schlage, conventional core, meaning it's not removable or interchangeable core. Now that's Schlage. That's Schlage. Schlage, as they say in German. That's how that's pronounced. I know on good authority. Schlage again. This would be full size removable core. Schlage's full size interchangeable core. Schlage again. Lots of schleg, not unusual, given how popular. Corbin Russwin, that would be an LFIC by Corbin Russwin. Control chambers are chambers two, three, four, and five in those cylinders. You generally pin two of those. Fun fact, Medico and Yale, these are together. If these are together, that means it's a, I think it's a 31 series by Medico, which means it's the Yale style, not the Medico type. Uh, removable or interchangeable core. That's a different, I think the standard is a 32 series where the Yale type is a 31 series. But you'll be able to run all of the medical keyways into that. Here's Sargent removable core. Best, this is an unusual hybrid. This is a conventional core that takes a best key blank. Now this is, a, this is an interesting cylinder. I had a client, a National Park Service in fact, they have a couple of dozen doors, cabinets. Maybe it's postal distribution, handing out the mail in the facility. And they constantly were breaking their camlock keys. And the guy said, do you have an answer? And I said, I do. He says, well, let me tell you the other problems. And he did. The length was weird. He needed a funny uh, tailpiece. He needed a special retaining ring but he needed a more robust key blank to keep them from splitting the keys. Well, we were able to upgrade them to this best small format key size, a full size key. Works splendidly. He hasn't broken one yet. He hasn't broken one yet. Just sold a mess of these, these cabinet locks, lost motion cabinet locks, which means you can move that key without a direct drive on, and I believe this one's lost motion. Okay. Anyway, you get the concept. Lots of options here. Now, what I wanted to get into, aha, we just passed it. Service and keying kits. I think we just passed it. Yes, we did. You want to get into rekeying this stuff? No problem. It's all here. It's all here. The keying kits are here for disc tumblers, pin tumblers. It's all here. Let's wrap up this video on camera. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. And if you have any sort of need for cabinet locks, drawer locks, cam locks, and you're looking for something that is among the highest quality and caliber that you can commercially get, I would, ver I would, just, I would say just go straight to Olympus. Their catalog might seem a bit uh, intimidating. It's really not. Spend a few moments getting the lay of the land, so to speak, and you'll quickly understand how it works. I prefer Olympus because of the quality, the ease of using their catalog, the availability, their prompt, predictable, reliable shipping times, their value, but also because of the. Uh, there's a gentleman in tech support there who is phenomenal. I don't draw on his expertise often, but when I do, he just is completely expert when it comes to command over the subject matter. 
to him for that, I say thank you. Any questions on the 200DW, inch and 5 eighths cylinder length, and a satin chrome type finish, or any other Olympus product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you. Again, thank you for watching, and if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up. Please subscribe and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.